Hey freshmen, hope you're enjoying um, this unusual week. I don't know how long we're gonna be out, but today the lesson that I'm recording is for Tuesday, um, January 31st. And um, we were gonna have our test over East Asia today on Tuesday, uh, and I have deferred it to Thursday. However, um, if we don't have school on Wednesday, then I'm going to defer it to next week. I hate to do that. Uh, but I want to make sure I have a day with you before the test to make sure you have everything that you need. So stay tuned on that. So right now we're just assuming we're out Monday, then today, Tuesday. We'll wait and see what happens with uh, Wednesday. So plan on taking the test on Thursday unless we don't have school on Wednesday. All right, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to introduce the new unit that we're going to be um, heading towards, uh, which is South Asia. Um, Specifically, we're going to target or focus um, on the country of India. Um, we're also going to hit a few other countries, but we're going to start with India. That's going to be the dominant country that we hit in this particular issue. Most of us have Indian neighbors or we know people, Indian people in the community. We have a few Indian families um, who are Christians that attend Lifeway. We have um, or historically, we have had a number of non-Christian Indian families that use um, that send their kids to the preschool. Uh, over in at, at school uh, in our preschool and so um, this is another example of how God has brought the world to us and um, I think it's important to understand a little bit about their culture and their country um, Hinduism is the dominant religion in India uh, Islam is also pretty prolific there but Hinduism is the dominant religion there are um, small minority groups of Christians in India as well and a few other odds and ends. So, uh, but we're gonna focus on their culture. To be Indian uh, largely is to be Hindu and that means different things for different people. Um, and that is not across the board, of course, but, but generally speaking. So um, we're gonna dive into India and look at their culture a little bit. So um, what I have done is I have sent you a kind of watered down slideshow PowerPoint. I have um, uh, I have attached it to the Google Classroom lesson along with a video link to this particular lecture. And um, if I sent you my entire slideshow, it, the, it would be too big of a file and Google Classroom won't accept it. So I'm going to make it smaller than it would normally be and I'm gonna walk you through it. So in a perfect situation, you would open up um, my lecture on a video screen, uh, uh, like basically in split screen, so you can see the PowerPoint in one box and you can see my lecture in another box so that you can see what I'm talking about um, as I walk through the PowerPoint with you. I'm also gonna have a few videos that I want you to um, uh, go to and watch on your own. And when the lesson is over, uh, there is a daily assignment log that is a Google Doc that's associated with this lesson in Google Classroom. When you're finished with the lesson, you're gonna open that up and you're gonna sign off on whether or not you watched the video, whether you uh, reviewed the, the PowerPoint, uh, and if you watch the accompanying videos with it. Uh, I'm gonna take your word for it. Um, hopefully you will not be deceptive. I don't see any reason why you would, um, but that gives you a little bit of accountability and it helps me know uh, that you have done what you're supposed to do. So I'm gonna make the lesson um, I'm going to upload it probably uh, so that it, that it opens up in the morning and it'll be available to you until about 5 p.m. And then if it's if you submit the uh, daily assignment log after 5 p.m., I'm going to count it late. I'm doing that because I want to make sure that you don't put everything off. Uh, till the very last minute. A virtual day is supposed to be a day where we're actually instructing and you're learning and it can count for a school day so that we don't have to repeat it at the end of the school year. Uh, so this is supposed to be a working day. So it won't take, this lesson won't be as long as if you were in class, but um, anyhow. Okay, so uh, normally I start this lesson out with a, um, a peek at a movie called The Jungle Book. Most of you are familiar with it. It was a Disney animated cartoon. They did a, a, a live um, slash animated version of it a few years ago. A lot of the characters are familiar. Um, you have, we have, there's Bengal Tigers and Baloo the Bear. Um, and actually when I was your age, I don't think I realized that, um, gosh, I can't think of his name. Um, Mowgli. I don't think I knew Mowgli was Indian. I don't know what I thought, but uh, 
uh, the author of the book, The Jungle Book, actually lived in India. And so the story that he writes about the Jungle Book actually takes place in the jungles of India, which again, I didn't know. Uh, so Mowgli is actually supposed to be a little Indian boy. Um, I'm not going to show that or ask you to watch any of that on your own independently. Uh, but there are a couple of pictures that um, that refer to the Jungle Book. Uh, so, all right. So, uh, one of the first slides you're going to see is a slide that says South Asia. The area of the country or area of the world that we're going to be talking about is called South Asia. Now, you'll notice uh, there's a slide that shows that we've talked about the Middle East. Uh, we've talked about Central Asia, which are the Stan countries. We've just barely mentioned them, but we've committed them uh, to memory on a map. Uh, and then we uh, went to East Asia, which is China, Mongolia, Japan, etc. And now we're going to South Asia, uh, which is... Um, uh, India, let's see here, um, India, Nepal, Maldives, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. I believe those are the, uh, the primary ones. You'll see it on, um, the map. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay. So I am going to do the fact of the day. Uh, there is a Google doc in, um, the assignment that says fact of the day and you're supposed to write down five facts for the Bengal tiger just like you would normally do. Um, if you want to write those facts out on a separate piece of paper and then transfer them, uh, which would probably be easier once I'm done with the video, uh, and then you can submit them to Google Classroom. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the Bengal tiger and show you there's, I'm just going to put a couple of slides on here because again of space, but I'm going to read through my fact of the day. So, all right. By the way, I'm in my room and my puppies, I'll turn the camera around here. My puppies are taking a nap. Oh, hello, Riley. Uh, so if they start barking all of a sudden, I apologize. Um, sometimes noises spook them and they just start howling. I'm hoping they won't do that. So um, I can still hear the ice hitting the window. Uh, so the weather is still nasty. All right. Um, I'm going to read through this. Feel free to grab any five facts that you want. Uh, the Bengal tiger is sometimes known as the Royal Bengal tiger, and it is a subspecies of tiger. The Bengal tiger is the second largest and the most common tiger subspecies. Uh, the Bengal tiger is primarily found in India, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, Myanmar, and southern Tibet, so the area largely that we're talking about. The Bengal tiger inhabits, uh, the Bengal tigers inhabit grasslands, subtropical and tropical rainforests, mostly Asian rainforests, uh, wet and dry deciduous forests, and mangroves. Uh, the Bengal tiger, tiger is the national animal of India and Bangladesh. Um, let's see, an average male Bengal tiger weighs about 420 pounds. The Bengal tiger has a body length of six feet. Uh, and a tail length of an additional three feet, and therefore from toe to tail, uh, about nine feet long. A female Bengal tiger uh, is only about 300 pounds and is eight feet long, uh, including the tail. Bengal tigers are incredibly strong and are able to drag their prey almost half a mile, even though the prey may be heavier than themselves. Um, a tiger's coat can actually come in a variety of colors. The standard colors of a Bengal tiger are orange on the body with black stripes coming down the sides. The two most common variations are the white Bengal tiger. Uh, and then they, there's also one called the golden tabby. And I'll include some pictures of those uh, in the PowerPoint. Uh, the white Bengal tiger is white with either brown or black stripes coming down the sides. And the golden tabby is a whitish yellowish whitish white yellowish color with amber stripes coming down the sides. Uh, tigers have very large fangs for killing and maiming prey. Uh, in fact, Bengal tigers have the longest canine teeth of any living felid measuring approximately four inches uh, long in large individuals. A canine tooth of a tiger is larger and longer than that of a similar sized lion. Bengal tigers also have large retractable claws that allow them to climb and kill prey. Um, and actually in the Jungle Book, one of the things that the enemy, the tiger, oh, what is his name? Shere Khan. Um, he's the one that's trying to hunt down Mowgli. Um, he will, he will pop his nails out, or his claws out, and then he'll retract them again. And when we, I'll should point that out to you when we're together. Um, let's see here. Uh, 
The stripes on a Bengal tiger help them to camouflage and stalk their prey. Bengal tigers have excellent vision and good hearing. The heaviest Bengal tiger ever reported, ooh, I don't have the, the I'm gonna skip that because it gives it in kilograms and not in pounds. Um, Bengal tiger behavior. Bengal tigers are mostly solitary. However, they sometimes travel in groups of three or four individuals. Bengal tigers reside in lowland parts of the rainforest where there are grasslands and swamps. They are excellent swimmers. Some male tigers occupy 200 square miles of territory and they protect it fiercely. Bengal tigers are extremely strong animals and can drag their kill, as I already said. Um, they are nocturnal, so they sleep during the day and they hunt at night. Despite their size, Bengal tigers can climb trees effectively. However, they are not as agile as smaller leopards, which hides its kill from other predators in trees. Bengal tigers also are strong and frequent swimmers, as I said, and they often ambush um, their prey while they are drinking or swimming in creeks and rivers and waters and in the swamplands. Um, okay, so pick five things out of that. Um, I may upload the fact of the day sheet as well, so you can take a look at that. Um, there are a couple of videos that I want you to watch. Let me go back over to my PowerPoint. Um, there's one in particular that is kind of interesting. Yeah, there's just one associated with the uh, fact of the day. Um, and I think it was on... National Geographic, maybe, uh, but um, uh, the crew, the camera crew captured um, a mama Bengal tiger and she had several cubs and um, they're in the wild. And so they got, I don't know how they got the footage of it, but um, it's very, very difficult to, to capture Bengal tigers on, on camera. And in this case, she's a mama uh, Bengal tiger. So it's only like three or four minutes long, but it's really, really cute. And I want you to watch it. So I will upload that link for you. Um, okay. Well, let's see here. There are a couple of definitions um, that are associated with this particular lesson. You do not need to copy the definitions down. Uh, they will be in the PowerPoint and I will make copies of those for you uh, and make them available. So I'll just, I'll just give them to you uh, when we see each other again. So you don't need to write these down uh, and copy them or transfer them into your notebooks. Um, you can just slide it into your notebook or tape it into your notebook when we are back together again. That the first definition of South Asia, so these are the countries that we're going to be learning about and they include primarily India. You'll see a flag on the slide that's actually the Indian flag. Um, we're also going to talk about Pakistan, Nepal, where Mount Everest is, Bhutan, which is a little tiny country next to Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, which is the teardrop at the bottom of the Indian uh, subcontinent, and then the island country of the Maldives, which is in South India and is on the southern side of India in the ocean. It's a bunch of little tiny flat little pancake islands. Um, very, very beautiful. Um, next definition is subcontinent. India is a subcontinent. Uh, it's a large land mass that is smaller than a continent. Uh, India is a perfect example of one. I've also included a slide that shows you the various subcontinents in the world. I want you to take a look at that. Some things that we don't think of subcontinents are, for instance, um, Saudi Arabia is considered a subcontinent on this map. Alaska is considered a subcontinent. Mexico and parts of Central America are considered a subcontinent. Um, Let's see, the Kam Kamchuka Peninsula, that far side of Russia, the tail of Russia is considered um, a subcontinent. And it looks like they're also including North and South Korea and that Southern part of Russia and China uh, as a subcontinent. So just take a look at that. Um, the next slide uh, has the word India and then it has all kinds of things, all kinds of words on it. And these words all represent some sort of aspect of Indian culture, something that's very pervasive part of their culture. Um, I'm gonna read through them. Uh, the caste system, Taj Mahal, reincarnation, the Golden Temple, Islam, Gandhi, Hinduism, holy cow, mysterious, the sari, uh, which is a dress that Indian women wear, festival of Co colors, the tiger, math, um, the caste system. These are all part of the Indian culture uh, that we're going to try to unpack. Um, the next slide um, indicates that you should watch a video. Uh, I have uploaded a video of, um, I think it's a travel video. Uh, yeah, uh, and so I want you to click on that and watch this little travel video and, and the, the PowerPoint will prompt you to do that. 
Um, let's see here, so you can get a visual of it. And then, the next few slides I'm actually gonna take out because they have to do with the Jungle Book. We will circle that wagon later. Um, and then the last couple of slides, um, it's called India Quick Facts. And so these are just a whole bunch of general facts about um, the country of India. Uh, they range from all kinds of random stuff to specific stuff. Some of these things are in your book and some of them are not. Uh, these, these would actually go in your note section of your uh, notebook. But again, since you don't have your notebook with you, probably um, I'm just going to make copies of this for you. But I'm going to go through these two slides with you really quickly and I want you to uh, follow along. Uh, so, okay. India is the seventh largest country in the world. Um, it is about a third the size of the United States. So this is in physical size, uh, not the number of people. Uh, seventh largest physical landmass country in the world. And it's only about a third the size of the United States. Um, it has the second largest population in the world, second to China, 1.2 billion, according to my notes, but it's probably grown since I did this PowerPoint. Uh, it is the most populous democracy in the world. It is considered a democracy. Um, it's the most populous democracy because of the size, the population size of the country. It's also the largest English speaking country in the world, again, largely because um, it, of the population of the country. Uh, it was a colony or it was colonized by the British, controlled by the British, large parts of it were. And so the English transferred their language to um, the people of India. Um, the number system that we use, it's based on the idea of a zero sum began in India by an Indian mathematician. Um, both Hinduism and Buddhism were birthed on this, the uh, Indian subcontinent, meaning that Hinduism is, is endemic to the subcontinent of India. That's where it, it comes from. Um, and then Buddhism, actually um, Buddha, the, the real historical Buddha, was born in the northern part of the subcontinent. So both of those religions have their roots uh, in India. Chess was invented in India. Um, India has the highest abortion rate of any country in the world, again largely goes because to the fact that it's a very populated country, but also abortion is legal in India. Um, the third largest number of Muslims in the world live in India. There are approximately 165 million Muslims that live in India. Uh, India has the world's largest uh, movie industry. It's called Bollywood, which is a play on Hollywood. It's a very, very big part of Indian pop culture, especially, especially amongst the younger Indian um, community. Um, they have their own version of MTV and soap operas and movie stars. Um, Nick Jonas is actually married to an Indian Bollywood star slash model. Um, I think she was a, an actor in Bollywood as well. Um, very beautiful lady. Um, it also, of course, India has a huge tech industry. Um, most of us have well, I don't know about you guys, but your parents certainly have um, made a phone call related to some sort of technology, whether it be a phone or a computer, trying to get some help. Uh, and they end up talking to someone on the other side of the world in an Indian call center. Um, and a lot of that sort of stuff has been outsourced to India because they speak English, uh, but they speak the Queen's English and they also have a very thick accent. So sometimes it's kind of hard to understand and can be very frustrating for people. I have not found that to be the case lately. I feel like most of those sorts of phone calls that have been made have um, diverted either to uh, the United States or just strictly to computer where you're not talking to a person, but they do have a very large tech industry. Um, they are the world's largest producer of tea. Uh, in fact, our American story is connected with India uh, and the tea in India. If you recall the story about the Boston Tea Party in America when the um, colonists got frustrated with the um, the taxes and they threw the tea into the ocean. Um, uh, that was actually a, a ship that came from East India. Uh, well, it was part of the East, East, East India Trading Company. It was run by the British, but the tea was probably originally um, from India. So we have kind of a connection there. Um, random fact, um, it, uh, as it's related to Hinduism, for funerals, most Indian people wear white. Whereas we would wear black and we wear white to, to weddings, they wear white to funerals. Um, India has six seasons. So they have their, um, you know, 
went spring, summer, winter, fall, like we do. But in addition to that, they have a monsoon season. They have a summer, uh, let's see, uh, uh, a winter monsoon season and a summer monsoon season. Uh, so they actually have six seasons. Their weather's kind of crazy, depending on where you are in the country, but their weather's pretty crazy. Uh, and then the last bullet point on this particular slide is that India was a British colony until 1947. Mahatma Gandhi helped to um, lead the country um, away from British occupation and colonization, and they gained their freedom in 1947. Uh, it was not an easy freedom to be had, but it didn't end up in a war uh, like the American Revolution did. Um, so, um, all right, so I'm going to, that's all I'm going to share with you today. I am going to um, uh, upload this PowerPoint. I want you to look at that. I want you to watch the videos that I mentioned. I want you to do the facts of the day on a Google Doc. Um, but the notes and the definitions, I'm going to make copies of for you. So I don't think this lesson will take very long. It certainly won't take 90 minutes. So um, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you enjoy your day in spite of the fact you have to do a little schoolwork. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me throughout the course of the day. Bye.